Hi everyone, welcome back. I've really enjoyed watching you make your coil pots. Now it's time for us to add some color. Today we're gonna to be using analogous color, which if you can remember from our oil pastel project, are colors that are right next to each other or neighbors on the color wheel. Before we start painting, let's talk about some of the information that we learned last time, and then I'll give you some um, information on what we're doing today. Today we'll be making a sculpture. A sculpture is different from what we've done before because it is not flat. It is something that you can view and enjoy by even walking around it. We're going to be using the word and vocabulary of texture. Raise your hand if you know what texture means. Okay, turn and talk to a partner. What do you think this sculpture might feel like? What is its texture? Texture is not always things that you can feel. For instance, this image is very flat because it's just a digital image and someone drew it, but the way we look at it and the way it makes us feel, it's almost kind of like hills. So it still has texture, even though it's something that we can't necessarily reach out and feel. Raise your hand. What are some other textures that you can think of? Today we'll be using something called clay. We're gonna be using air hardening clay, so it's not something that I have to put into an oven and cook, it's something that will dry overnight. So this is a project that we will only be doing for today because it will be dry by next time that I see you. Clay is a special kind of soil from the earth, which is created when rocks start to hit each other under the earth, and they start turning powdery, and then they get mixed with water and they saturate. So it's kind of like a very thick mud. When clay is cleaned and refined, it makes an exceptional material for pottery. Pottery is like bowls and dishes and things that we use. Oftentimes, they used a technique called coiling, which we will try today, to create their works of art. Pottery is a very prominent part of Texas culture because the indigenous peoples or the Native Americans that lived here definitely use pottery to create the tools that they needed for life, but also decorated them as a way of art. However, I want you to know that clay was not only used for pottery, but had many other purposes as well. So we should be receiving our pots back. Be very, very careful with them. Um, we should have written our initials on the bottom and you should know um, which one's yours. Now, when we started this, it was kind of the color of the paper towel. Now it's this really bright white. That's what happens when the clay dries. It oftentimes gets a lot brighter. That's because the air on the outside dried up all the moisture that was inside the bowl. And now that there's no moisture and it's dry, it's um, completely white. So here's some things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a paper towel. You're going to need a placemat. You're going to need a paintbrush, a water cup that you can share with a partner. And then today we're gonna be using one of these to paint with a neighbor. So you guys are gonna be kind of pairing up and sharing this paint tray with your neighbor. Now you get to choose your own colors, but you do have to share this with a neighbor. So today we're gonna be using the color wheel to pick out the colors that we're going to be using. Now, who could raise their hand and tell me what kind of color scheme that we're using? So what kind of colors did we say that we have to use for this project? Raise your hand. I hope you said analogous colors because we're using colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So take a look here. I'm gonna give you a moment to kind of think about what kinds of colors that you might wanna use. I'll go ahead and give you an example. So today I'm gonna to be using red, which is in that very top right, and then orange, which is next door, and then yellow. So my three neighbors right there, I can use those colors to paint today because those are analogous. They're right next to each other on the color wheel. But you could also do blue turning into purple, turning into red. It's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and give you about one minute to talk it over with the neighbor. Now you don't have to choose the same thing, but I just want you to tell at least one person what three colors you might want to use. Today I will call y'all up to come get your colors um, near the sink. So please be ready with your partner to come get your colors. Remember you have three colors each, so I'm gonna put each partner on one side so that y'all can share this little plate. So here are my colors, red, orange, and yellow because they're analogous. 
I'm gonna use these colors to paint my uh, little coil pot. You don't need a whole lot of paint. This will definitely go a long way. So I'm only gonna give each of y'all a little dab of paint, that's all. So think about the different ideas that you could do. You could have the colors mixing and make an ombre on your coil pot. You could do something kind of crazy. Maybe you're following the textures and the different lines that you made last time. It's totally up to you. I want you to be totally creative with this project. So I've painted a little bit. I'm kind of just following the textures that I made last time. You don't have to do it, but otherwise I'm just kind of being crazy and going for it, very abstract. I need to clean my brush because now it's time that I want to use the orange and the yellow. I don't want to mess up those colors, so I'm going to take my brush, place it in the water, remember swirl, dip, let it drip, and then we need to dry off. You need to give it a little dab. No, not this kind of dab this kind of dab. Make sure your brush is clean. You may have to go back and do it again just to make sure that your brush is completely clean and then you can go into the next color. So here's what mine looks like. It looks a little bit crazy. That's okay. That's it's all right, guys. It's art. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, I do want you to paint the inside of your pot. So don't forget to go in there. That's what I'm probably gonna do next. You don't have to paint the bottom. Please don't actually, because then your paint is going to stick your pot to the placemat and then I'll have to tear it off, which will be no fun for me. So now I'm gonna paint the inside of my cup. So here's what I came up with. I decided to do something totally different for the inside. Um, I didn't forget to do the rim of my cup, but on the inside I did more of an ombre, so I had some of the colors mixing together to really show how the analogous colors are the ones that really mix well together. So that's what I did on the inside. You can do yours totally different. I think I'm all done. So what I'm gonna do, if it's dry enough, just take it, hold it like a little baby, be very, very careful with it, and you're going to take it and put it on the back counter. I might even have a little tray for you to put it in, but just put it on the back counter for now so that it can rest and dry and take a nap overnight so that it'll be ready for next time. As always, when you are done with the water and the paintbrush, you just put the paintbrush inside the water, you walk it over to the sink, put it in the sink, and then you are done. You do not need to clean this out. So now it's time to Clean out the paint tray, and there is plenty of paint in there. See, I told you, you wouldn't need that much. I'm gonna turn the water on. Now I'm just turning it on low pressure. I don't need the high pressure, it's just low. Otherwise you're gonna get wet. Um, I'm gonna take this big paintbrush, these are for the cleaning. I'm gonna get it wet underneath the water and just start painting the paint away. I know that seems a little bit weird, but it works. You're just going to paint the paint away. You're painting with water. And then don't forget the sides. Once the water starts running clear, you know that you have finished. Just dry it off, you'll shake it a little bit. And then you can just leave it on the side of the sink to dry out.